Hi, um, this is your buddy Paul here on YouTube, and I just like to talk a little bit about um, a vegetarian or vegan um, lifestyle. And I've heard, you know, a lot of different people espouse why or why they don't um, eat meat, animal products, and not to be, you know, to preach at anybody or or to point my finger or to like um, put myself up on a pedestal or you know demean or hurt other people's their own um, beliefs I'll speak from my own point of view and my own thoughts that have that have only come to me as a result of a lot of time soul searching and these this, these views that I have now did not just come about overnight or like all of a sudden like that. It was something that I've had to force myself into and force myself or strive to become and live more against the grain of the social norm that I live in, that, that, I'm, that I'm immersed in because meat eating is a normal American way of life and to to be not to be that way to be like vegan is like very 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 much difficult for me um, I don't live in a monastery I don't live in India um, I don't live in an Indian community where there was other people that are from the Indi India or Hindu which would be easy then if everybody else was a vegan around you yeah it'd be easy to be vegan but when you live in a world where people barbecue and they all go out and have steak and hot dogs and hamburgers everywhere and this is a different matter I but the main I think the main crux for me in my heart has been suffering I mean the channel suffering sucks there was a video made and it really was a very good video and I think he's a hundred percent right on as far as what I believe he's a hundred percent right on I have no disagreement with him at all on that in that in that area and this is like it's like a tough very tough issue because it's so ingrained in our culture to accept eating meat as being normal and that you know we have the the canine and scissors you know for tearing meat you know in it's in it's part of our nature I mean if you're an Eskimo how can you be a vegan if you're an Eskimo or if you're a hunter-gatherer in you know in the north northern Canada boreal forest then it'd be it'd be idious it'd be idiocy to, th to think you could be a vegan you'd die um, but the decision to be that way for me has come about because of the suffering because after much soul searching I've realized that the animals have they feel I mean the animals feel just like Jerry was saying in the suffering sucks channel that the animal the animals have the feelings you can't deny that no matter how hard you try you can't deny that and for me, I've been pretty good about being meat-free most of the time. The times that I have eaten meat are usually at picnics where there's a company picnic or you know a company function or a family function, which since my dad's had cancer, they've become changed over to vegetarian, vegan, or tried to be vegetarian. And... I've had cats and dogs since I was a youngster, and I would never imagine having a cat in a cage and then putting it in a tiny little cage with thousands of other cats and then forcing it to live in a little tiny cage in the dark and not having any, giving it any kind of love or affection and just knowing that there's these huge farms, factory farms out there where the animals are treated like 
dirt, you know, and they t t practically live in torture. Well, they do live in torture. And, and then I go and I buy a piece of bologna at a store and eat it, and that's like nothing. But I understand that, okay, it was like at one point I took that red pill. I took the red pill, which was a PETA meeting at a college at Sonoma State University. And it, it was that one moment in my life when it was apparent that eating meat is your indirectly you're participating in the, in that in the cruelty of that animal that you went to the store you bought the steak you, you you were you were numb but now you realize now you realize okay that animal had a life it had lived its life it saw it it smelled it heard it was a living being and and there you are just like <laughs> without any thought you know and now it's like now i think and last time I ate steak, I actually had some really bad nightmares. I dreamt that that guy on Bad Santa, the little guy, was, was like, <laughs> like a huge, and he was chasing me. And I was like a nightmare, and I woke up from it. And that was like the day before that I was eating meat, well, which it was my own subconscious working out realizing what I had done. You know, I was like sick and I thought, oh, well, I'll feel better if I eat some steak and eggs. So I bought some steak and I cooked it and ate it with some eggs. And... But so, <clears throat> which gets back to the point of the cruelty and the suffering part of it. Now, for fish, I like tilapia. I know, well, tilapia are kind of dumb fish and still they suffer, but they, they're not in a pen and they don't, they're not as environmentally it's more of a sustainable eating, and, which is another issue altogether the environment. And pretty much I'm going to wean myself off of that eventually and go into eating more of the you know, tofu and, and seeds and grains. And, and um, it's just hard because it's not the, the community I live in and the person I'm married to isn't, doesn't have the same beliefs that I have in that regard. So it's... It's, it hasn't been easy to change over. And that's pretty much my thoughts about that. I'll have to finish this video some other time because there's a lot more to be said about this. And it wasn't something that I just happened to me overnight. It's been something I've been trying to implement into my lifestyle over a long period of time. And yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Have a nice day.